Let's take that lion swivel knife challenge that we did a little while back and see how far we can push it with just a few basic tools. That's coming up. Hello everyone, my name is Daniel Reach. This is Weaver Leather Supply. Today, we're gonna be taking that swivel knife challenge that we did a little while back where we made the lion, and we're gonna take that and see how much further we can push it with just some basic tools. Now, we've already used a swivel knife and a modeling spoon, so those are still fair game. But in addition to that, we're gonna be using a steep bevel, a traditional bevel, a lined pear shader, and a backgrounder. Now, I know you might not actually have all four of those in your kit, but I would really encourage you to consider getting them. Each one of them offers something specific that's hard to get anywhere else. Now, you can get them all from Weaver, um, and they're really affordable, so we'll put a link in the description so that if you don't have any of them, you can find them really easily. Let's throw that swivel knife challenge up on the screen so that we can see where we left off and where we're going to be starting today. So the first thing that jumps out to me is that all of the shading, all of the lines are really soft. We don't have any crisp edges in there, and that's because we did it all with a modeling spoon. It looks good for a modeling spoon, but if we go back in with our steep bevel, we can get a lot more crisp, well-defined edges. So that's what we're gonna do first. So while you watch me do that real quick, let's talk about why you would want to start with the steep bevel, then move to the traditional bevel. The steep bevel is fantastic at creating a really well-defined edge, where the traditional bevel is better at pushing that leather back and away. So if we start with the steep bevel, we get that crisp edge we're looking for, then we can move to, to the traditional bevel, which is going to push that leather back and away from the cut. So I want to mention something real quick before we get too far into the beveling, and that is that the outside of the head should be a lot more pronounced than the, the lines and the definition on the inside of the face. So we want this to be a lot deeper and a lot more pronounced, where we want the inside of it to be a lot softer, a lot more subtle. So the head is really starting to show a lot more definition, but we've also got some pretty distinct bevel shadows around it. To blend it more, I'm gonna go back with my traditional bevel and rework everything that I just did. That's gonna give me the best of both worlds, a really well-defined edge and a nice subtle transition into the mane. So with that done, we can go ahead and start working on the main, but that means we've got a decision to make. Are we going to use the traditional bevel and the steep bevel like we did to start with, or are we going to stick with just that traditional bevel? Well, to decide that, we've got to ask ourselves a question. Should the main have as much definition as the head does? And really, hair doesn't have really crisp, hard lines most of the time. It can, but not most of the time. So for that reason, I'm gonna stick with just the traditional bevel and I'm gonna skip that steep bevel on the main. So we've already laid in the shadows in the hair with the modeling spoon, so all we really have to do is just retrace our steps with the traditional bevel.
So now we can go ahead and grab that lined pear shader and start working in some of those shadows. Now, this is not your typical pear shader. I'm gonna put a picture up right here so that you can see what we're talking about. The first thing I want you to notice is that it's elongated. It's not your typical pear-shaped pear shader. And what that does for us, it makes it a lot easier to stretch those shadows and fade them out. The other thing that I would point out to you is that it's the lines on it are vertical, not horizontal. It's gonna be a lot easier to work with. So what am I gonna be doing with it? Well, essentially I'm using it to create more shadows around the head. I wanna create high points and low points, kinda of like waves. Think about your hair. It has high points, it has recessed areas, and that's what we're trying to create. Just be subtle with it, don't overdo it. So we're gonna wanna create some visual separation between the lion and the background. And to do that, I'm gonna be using this backgrounder right here. Now, one of the things I wanna point out to you is how coarse the texture is on this backgrounder. You can go one of two directions with it. One, you can go really heavy handed with your mallet or your maul. That's gonna give you a really coarse, heavy texture or you can go with a lighter touch and it's gonna create a much softer effect, almost a blurry effect to it. And that's what I'm gonna go with. I don't want anything dramatic. I just want a little bit of visual separation between the lion and the mane and the background. And last, I'm gonna be using my ball stylus to kind of push the leather out from the back. I'm not really embossing it. It's just more like trying to get the facial features to pop a little bit. So I'm gonna go in with my ball stylus and just work it from the back very subtly to get those features to pop a little bit more. So as you can see, with some basic tools and a little bit of work and a little bit of know-how, you can get some really nice definition out of your projects. That's going to do it for this video. I will see you in the next one. In the meantime, go make something amazing.